this shape built from Fibonacci numbers, right? Built from Fibonacci rectangles, which get closer and closer to golden rectangles, is found in nature in lots and lots of places. Okay, so some organisms grow by adding on new pieces while maintaining their shape, which is different than how um, like people grow. So people, every part of you is growing at the same time, whereas there are some organisms that just the old part stays exactly what it looked like before and it adds on a brand new piece, like a tree, right? It grows in rings, so you can tell what it looked like when it was younger. By, by saying, oh, well, that would be the innermost ring, right? So that means if you're going to grow in that way and maintain your shape, then the new thing that you're gluing on to yourself to make yourself bigger has to be a gnomon to yourself. That way you'll, you'll, remain, you'll maintain similarity. So we have a nautilus shell, trees, pine cones, sunflowers, they all grow that way, where they add new pieces to themselves yet maintain their shape. So we may watch this video later. Actually, I can't decide which video I want us to watch. I think maybe Vi Heart. Tree that grows in rings, so the rings are what's added, and, and the gnomon to a circle we talked about last class was a ring. The nautilus shell, so each chamber of the shell is the new growth. So it keeps adding these chambers on and maintaining its shape in this spiral, which is Fibonacci spiral. And then also on the, on the head of a sunflower or many other flowers, you can count the spiral, the seed spirals. So there's a spiral, and then there's one next to it. There's one next to it. So that's one of the things that Vi was just explaining in the video is that new seeds push out from the middle. They're repelled from, e from the center and from each other to where there's the most room for them. And they end up making these, these spiral things in, in Fibonacci numbers. Okay, so note that both of the spirals look like the spiral we created from the Fibonacci rectangle. All right, so one other explanation for spiral growth has to do with packings, okay? So the best way to pack square objects would be to stack them like this. And the best way to pack circular objects would be like this. So if you had like um, water bottles or something and laid them on their sides, you'd stack them hexagonally. But seeds are round, so you might expect a hexagonal packing but um, seeds don't have a consistent size. When seeds first come out, pop out from the meristem, they're tiny. And as, as time passes, they grow bigger and bigger and bigger. So the hexagonal packing isn't necessarily going to work. And also seeds have to fit on a flower head, which is circular. Okay, so they have to fit in a circular space, and the hexagonal packing is kind of rectangular. So nature is looking for a packing that will fit as many seeds as possible in a round area without overcrowding any one spot, and that will maintain this efficiency even as the seeds grow bigger. So this is asking a lot. Um, sounds like it would be a complicated rule, but like we saw in the video, the rule that makes all of this happen is actually really simple. Each seed moves to where there is the least amount, the, the most space for it and that is going to cause your spiral growth by using an angle of 137 and a half degrees or 225 and a half degrees depending on which direction you measure from so you notice that if you do 225 and a half over 137 and a half you get phi 1.61803 so let's see if this youtube video works i think it might be gone but we'll try it Um, so why do the Fibonacci numbers pop up so much when we're trying to follow this rule? 
So the ratio, ratio of successive Fibonacci numbers is the best approximation you can get for phi using a ratio of two whole numbers. So the, bet, the closest you can get to the real golden ratio, 1.61803, that decimal that goes on and on and on, is to use a ratio of two Fibonacci numbers. The biggest ones you can find, yeah. And plants can only grow a whole number of leaves or seeds or um, petals, right? So it can't say it can't grow, you know, 1.6 leaves. That would be weird. It can only have one or two or three, whatever. So the best approximation to fee that a plant can make is to use Fibonacci numbers. So the golden ratio and Fibonacci numbers pop up so much in nature. Um, next time you're in the grocery store, look for Fibonacci numbers. Anything that's spirally um, and, and even non-spirally things you know, will have show Fibonacci numbers in them. But other than nature, they also pop up in art and architecture. Sometimes there's evidence that the artist or architect invoked the ratio purposely. They knew about the Fibonacci numbers or the golden ratio and purposely used it in the design of their work. And other times it seems coincidental, like the ratio just seemed pleasing or right to the artist. So here are a few examples. The Parthenon of ancient Greece. Um, if you draw a rectangle around it, if you take the, the pinnacle of the roof, right, put a rectangle around it, this is a golden rectangle where the length divided by the width is the golden ratio. Every rectangle in here that you see, all of these rectangles are golden. It has eight columns across the front and 13 going back. Probably for the four plant, right? Well, if, if it's eight something by thirteen something, then the the base of of the building would be a approximately a golden rectangle. So we see phi in, in in tons of places in this one, and we can overlay the Fibonacci spiral on it, and it just lines up perfectly. This one. We think was done on purpose. Leonardo da Vinci used the golden ratio in, in lots of his work. Um, we see lots of golden rectangles um, used as part of the composition of where to place things, how large to make them, things like that. We have golden rectangles. We have two golden triangles here, those 36, 72, 72 triangles. <clears throat> The Egyptian pyramids show the golden ratio. So if you take the slant height, right, this distance from the center of any given side, the distance to the top, and you divide by the distance from the center out, that's the golden ratio, or it's very close to the golden ratio. Remarkably close given the uh, vastness of this project and the tools that they had to complete it. Yeah. Cathedral of Notre Dame, golden ratio in, in lots of places. So I, I have this picture marked with some parts white and some parts blue. Anytime you do a white divided by a blue, it's golden ratio. So the distance like from the end of one tower to the next divided by the length of the tower is a golden ratio. And there's golden ratios in the heights and the columns and everywhere. Um, it's also, so all of those things were, were really old architecture. We have also more modern art and architecture that show the golden ratio. This is um, a Georgian style house constructed using the golden ratio. This is, Oh my God, I can't remember. I, th I want to say that building's in New York City. I can't remember what building it is. It'll come to me. 
<laughs> a tall one, yeah. And then these are just a couple pieces of art. This one has golden rectangles all um, inside of it. Not every rectangle is golden, but there are a bunch of them in there. And then this is uh, a common rule that artists use when, when composing a piece is it's often referred to as the rule of thirds, right? But that's for eyeball reasons. Um, really, when people do this, often they're trying to create the golden ratio, right? So that the longer piece divided by the smaller piece is phi. <clears throat> and and uh, an easy way to eyeball that is to cut your canvas into thirds and and use the one third. Um, we use it in everyday carpentry. So let's say uh, this one, we have a factory made versus um, a set of cabinets designed using the golden ratio. Do you think one of them is nicer than the other? Yeah. I mean, it's not. It's it's a matter of opinion. Just. One was made using the golden ratio. Golden ratio also pops up in poetry, music, film, lots more in nature. Um, an in-depth discussion of nature or humans' use of the golden ratio might make a great project. And you could just pick one thing, like you could do poetry or music or whatever. I forgot to print out the project guidelines. I'll bring them next class. So um, the human body exhibits overall growth as opposed to mnemonic growth, but we still have the golden ratio in us as well. There are all kinds of measurements that you can take um, that show the golden ratio. So I think, I think if you take your whole height and divide by the distance from your belly button to your feet, it comes out as the golden ratio. And then there's like all these other ones too. All right, so for the remainder of class, um, I wanted you to work in your groups to try to pull some of or all of this stuff together. And you have a worksheet called Class 17 Classwork Slash Homework. So you don't have a new homework in my math lab tonight. You're just going to finish this worksheet. 